Now, what I'm going to show you is three simple step process. So what you're going to look at is the map view on the left, and then I'm going to actually incorporate the average frac length that I actually took, okay, from that one field I had. So I'm going to incorporate that for the spacing of my wells. And then, of course, the length of my lateral, the number of stages I can have dictates that length of the lateral. So I'll use that information. And also the information I have in relation to the orientation of my well in relation to the natural frac that exists in the system. And I gave that up-dip kind of configuration with heel down and toe up so that it can efficiently drain this reservoir. Now let's go ahead and create the laterals. Now the, remember, the laterals is the key. That's what dictates the production for this entire field. So the, what I basically did is I incorporated the best practices from the neighboring wells, and I incorporated that from a field planning. So you're looking at that yellow and orange, that's the heel and toe. It actually uniformly fills all across those leases, okay, and maintains that setback as well. Let's take a closer look in the 3D view if you would. So again, these are the laterals that stay within the reservoir, so they are not any constraint as far as uh, field planning is concerned. So that's our first step. The second step I'm going to do is basically look at my surface challenges and incorporate the pad configurations I have access to. Right now, I have a couple of pad configurations, so I'm going to ask this tool to go ahead and use those pad configurations and figure out optimally where it needs to lay out a 8-slot pad, where it needs to lay out a 10-slot pad. So let's go ahead and do our pad placement. Okay, so what you're looking at in red is basically the 8 and green is the 10 slot. So remember that corner, for example, it put an 8 slot pad in red because we have less number of laterals. And on the right side, the green slot, you have more distribution of laterals, so it places a uh, 10 slot pad. If you go take a closer look, it avoids that river zone and then it also avoids that environmentally sensitive area. It even makes sure it doesn't put any of those pads in the terrain, the slopey terrain, so that we risk mechanical stability of those pads. So it took all the challenges we have. Also, you can have the setback that whatever the county wants. Now, the next part is basically completing our horizontal plans. So in here, what you have is different types of typical directional driller would need. So this is all the technology from Sperry's expertise and also from Landmark's compass technology. So we incorporated that. All I did is I, I brought in a couple of horizontal well plans. In one case, I had eight as a dog leg. In the other case, I had 10. Again, you can play with all these directional parameters. So all I did here is I gave options to be considered in order to develop this entire field plan. So let's go ahead and develop our field now. That's our third step. So there you go. It went ahead. It used up all our laterals and developed this entire field. Now, this is actually our first pass at our field planning. If you notice it, most of those field plans are actually coming from a common slot. It's not actually using our slot arrangement. This is where what we can do is we can go ahead and further optimize our entire field and come up with more robust drillable wells. So what you're looking at here is the pad association. In here, the very first one is using only 50% of the slots. So there, I can lower it to a lower pad configuration. By that, I'm lowering the total cost for this field. And not only that, this is going to help us to understand how many pads you would need, what kind of pad sizes you would need. This would be a great benefit for our, uh, for our uh, customers so that they can secure those pads in time, especially in Eagle Fold, which is very, very active. This is a key for them, and that's a great benefit for our customers compared to their competitors. The other thing I can do is I can give a range of parameters for my initial and final conditions, like for kickoff and hold angle, so that I can build that curve and keep the lateral in the reservoir, and I can also account for the, any separation issues for the shallow part of the reservoirs before they kick off into, that res uh, into the reservoir zone. So let's go ahead and apply that and see how our plans are going to look like. So there you go. It went ahead. See how uh, the laterals, sorry, the shallow part of our well plans are split using that separation factor. And then it has a nice curve built. It actually had that up-dip kind of configuration for our reservoir. It used up pretty much all of our laterals. Now let's take a closer look at our so there you go, you got that update. Let's take a closer look at our surface in relation to our pad placement. So this is a good tool. It can actually help us to understand the rig scheduling as well. For example, you know that red uh, pad you're looking at? You can actually understand where you need to put this pad, where you need to move this pad after you're done with this particular site. So this is a good tool to understand where to go from one place to another place as well. Now, the real power of this tool 
we did whatever we just did, that's basically six months work without a tool like this. The real power of this tool is it drastically reduces that cycle time to come up with different field planning scenarios. What kind of scenarios am I talking about? Some operators in Eagle Ford, they want small laterals and more pads. Some actually want long laterals, less number of pads. Some want their direction of orientation of the, in relation to that minimum uh, stress direction around 10 to 15 degrees so that they can drive in the fracking mixture in the right crevices. Now you can actually incorporate all those scenarios where it's pad sizes, costs, or laterals, whichever it is, from horizontal well planning. So that's what you're actually looking at. That's the real power of this tool. It can actually build multiple scenarios like this. Think about it. You don't have six months to just change your orientation a little bit. This is the same exercise one of our customers has gone through up in the north, where he actually reduced, he, he ran like 30 to 40 different iterations or scenarios, if you would, and he's able to shave off 15 days, almost half a month of drilling time. Not only that, he reduced the number of pads by increasing the length of the laterals, which means he reduced for fewer facilities, less road construction, and other pad services and operations. So he was able to reduce $12 million off the bat just from the planning of it. So that's the true power of this application.